Hello and welcome to the SOFA series. My name is Erin Selby and I'm the Director of Education and Training for UFCW Local 832. And we do always like to start off with a land acknowledgement. So uh, welcome. As long as the sun shines, the grass grows and the river flows. UFCW Local 832 acknowledges that we are gathered and work each day on ancestral lands, the traditional territory of Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Denny's people, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. Our offices are located in Treaty 1 and 2 territory, and our work extends into Treaties 3, 4, and 5. We recognize the injustices done to the people, to the Indigenous people of this land, and are committed to supporting and collaborating with Indigenous communities in the spirit of truth and reconciliation. So tonight we're going to be talking about uh, summertime because it almost feels like it's here. Joining me is Melanie Alford, who is well known to lots of UFCW folks. Melanie is coming to us tonight from MyTech. Thank you for joining us, Melanie. Thank you, Erin. Tell us everyone. a little bit about what MyTech is. Absolutely. So MTEC stands for Manitoba Tourism Education Council. And what we do is we support the tourism industry, but not just the tourism industry, really any business that provides customer service. And that's pretty much every business. So we expand outside of tourism, hospitality, retail as well, but we do specialize in supporting the tourism industry. And you are going to talk to us tonight about sort of shorter, small day trips we can take because some people may not be still wanting to travel too far. And we got lots of great things to see in this province. So Melanie, I'm going to hand it over to you. And I'm hoping to learn a whole lot of things. But I will just say, if anyone has any questions, please don't use the chat. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, there's a QR questions. And you can talk to me that way. And we'll, we'll ask your question if we have time at the end. Thank you, Melanie. Take it away. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me today. I'd like to share some wonderful ideas for exactly that Manitoba day trips or road trips. And, um, you know, we still might have our holidays planned for this summer, but still, you know, we have our holidays. We still might want to get away on the weekends or our days off and just take a little short road trip. What we look at in terms of a road trip, the travel board of the country, Canada, actually defines a road trip as being a four to five hour trip. And that's one way. So it might be a longer road trip, or it might be a shorter road trip. I'm going to provide you with some options that are kind of outside the, you know, what we automatically might think as Manitobans, what might be a great destination to go to. I want to think a little bit outside of the box with, with you within the next 45 minutes. So just to start off with, let's talk about discovering our, a new favorite place, a new favorite destination this summer, but why? Why should we hit the highway and discover some of Manitoba's hidden gems this summer? So why explore our province? Manitoba, firstly, is the center of Canada with seven unique regions, and I'm going to show you those regions right away. Manitoba also has, as you know, four distinct seasons that have a variety of activities to enjoy in each. We are also home to 100,000 lakes, which is incredible. But also incredible is that Manitoba has 92 provincial parks. Did you know that? I was shocked. I've been working in tourism for many years, and I was so surprised to discover that we have 92 provincial parks. So you can guarantee that some of my ideas might be linked to some of those provincial parks. Number five, Manitoba has a perfect mix of unique hospitality options that charm and delight visitors of all kinds. We also have a vibrant culture and art scene as well all across the province. And we are home to several lively festivals throughout the year, not just summertime. And Manitoba is home to world-class entertainment. Manitoba is rich in history. And number 10, Manitoba's 
culinary options has made it a true foodie paradise, which has several different types of food, different ethnic options as well, and including um, indigenous food options and restaurants and culinary festivals as well that can be accessed. So that gives us an idea of why we should explore Manitoba in all seasons, but we're focusing again on summer. So I'd like to share those regional destinations with you. Manitoba has seven region, regions in the province. You see here, Manitoba North, also known as North of 53. That's this blue area that you see on my map here. We won't be exploring too many day trips to the northern region just because it's quite a bit farther. It doesn't really qualify as a day trip unless you can get right to the very tip here, then you probably could. Parkland region, we have the interlaked region, we have eastern, western, central region, and of course, Winnipeg. Um, thinking what, what I've done here when I'm showing you some options for day trips, I was thinking of the two major cities in the province. So it'll be focusing on traveling from the Brandon area as well as the Winnipeg area. I apologize for those of you that are outside of those major cities, but that is the focus of um, where we're gonna be setting off as examples. So the day trip, destinations. I'm looking to explore with you scenic day trips that are some ideas, some destinations. Those of you that are the adventurous type, we're going to look at some ideas for adventurous day trips and then relaxation, which we all appreciate. <laughs> relaxation day trips. What are some destinations, some ideas for those types of road trips we can take? Also to mention that there is so much to see and do in Manitoba. Um, I might pull up some ideas for the scenic that you might be thinking, oh, but there's so much more. Absolutely, 100%. But again, I'm just kind of highlighting the tip of some of those ideas. And again, some of them that aren't so common that, you know, you don't, you don't pull up as a tourism attraction, um, trying to look outside of, you know, maybe in smaller communities, maybe in smaller destinations. So maybe towns or those provincial parks, like I said. So I definitely want to be inclusive of all of the excellent Manitoba destinations and activities we can all partake in. But again, you know, it's just a few of the many. So let's start with scenic day trips. Okay, I first have here highlighted White Mouth Falls Provincial Park. So that is in the eastern region of Manitoba. And during your road trip to Seven Sisters Falls, which is a beautiful destination, you'll find the magnific magnificent park of White Mouth Falls. Now you can experience nature and wildlife at its finest in this park. Um, the destination of White Mouth Falls, um, as well as particularly Seven Sisters Falls, it makes for an incredible scenic view of the two rivers of the Seven Sisters Falls and the hydroelectric dam as well. Also another option is to go to White Shell Provincial Park. There is so many things to see and do in White Shell, of course, but again, highlighting Rainbow Falls. This picture you see here, if you can see my cursor, is a picture of the Rainbow Falls. And it is in the center of the park and it's close to the White Lake Resort. Now the White Lake Resort, of course, is a place to stay for accommodation if you'd like to spend an overnight there. Um, and the White Lake Resort um, has a accommodation, but it also has a restaurant and a general store, which is really helpful too. So going to the Rainbow Falls area, there's things to do for photographers, for anglers, for hikers, or again, just beautiful scenery lovers. 
what I really like about the White Lake Resort and be able to view the Rainbow Falls is that it's also wheelchair accessible. The next one I have here is Nopi Ming Provincial Park, which currently right now, um, the main highways are closed due to flooding, but they're gonna open up soon and visitors will be able to visit Tulubi Falls. Now Tulubi Falls, um, is again in the eastern region of Manitoba. And the park itself has beautiful trails, has rapids for the experienced kayakers, and it's only two and a half hours from Winnipeg. And you just go straight through Highway 59 and you get to go through Lac de Bonny, which Lac de Bonny has again, stores, restaurants, beautiful scenery, it's lake country, and there's lots to see and do, even if you decide to drive through Lac de Bonny. And of course, there's accommodations options there too. Little Limestone Lake. So Little Limestone Lake is the other picture you see here on my screen. Isn't it beautiful? Little Limestone Lake is the finest and largest example uh, in the world of a marl lake, meaning it changes color with fluctuations in temperature. I've been there and it's absolutely breathtaking. It's beautiful. It's like you've gone to, to a lake in the BAM, in BAM for Lake Louise. It's so beautiful and picturesque. So you can um, definitely stay in Grand Rapids if you plan to go visit Little Limestone Lake. Uh, it's a little bit larger of a road trip at um, five hours from Winnipeg. You go past Grand Rapids, but it's so worthy, worthy to mention. The next one is something a little bit off the rails, literally. So it's Prairie Dog Central Rail Railway, which isn't a road trip by car. Instead, you're taking a trip by train. So Prairie Dog Central uh, Railway is just 20 minutes outside of Winnipeg. There's regular trips every weekend, and it started as of May long weekend. So it's wonderful because the trips itself takes about four hours, and it has one stop in the rural community of Gross Isle, and it's great for families, and it's great for those shorter road trips where you don't actually have to drive. It's doing the driving for you. So it's very unique, very unique in Manitoba. My very last scenic day trip destination is Steep Rock. And I want to highlight Steep Rock in terms of speaking to it as a feature destination for those scenic road trips. Here you see the map of the, the amount of time from Winnipeg is about two and a half hours, all one highway, right? Just one easy highway, Highway 6, driving north, to Steep Rock. Now, Steep Rock is in central Manitoba. It's on the eastern shore of Lake Manitoba. And again, you just take the Highway 6 from Winnipeg. But if you're coming from the Brandon area, it's a little bit more of different roads we have to take. But it also means more unique destinations on where we could stop. So you can see here, you take the Highway 10, you're going through Nipawa, um, you're going up to St. Rose du Lac, and you're continuing to go through Ashern to get to Steep Rock as well. Steep Rock is, again, located on Lake Manitoba, and it offers the most amazing sunsets, fantastic cliff and rock formations. You can take a self-guided tour and explore the many private coves by kayak or canoe. There are beaches in Steep Rock, and there are ATV riding and walking trails that you can access as well. And if you decide to spend the night, there are accommodations available. You can stay for one night or you can stay for longer. There is a Steep Rock Beach campground, which is a private campground. It has four areas, totaling 55 sites available to overnight campers. There's a general store as well for all your camping needs, as well as a cafe that serves burgers, fries, summer food, those types of things. And that picture there that you see on my screen is a picture of the Steep Rock Beach campground as well. 
And there's also cabins that are available for longer stays. Other options as you're driving through, if you're driving from the Brandon area, there's the Sir Edgar House Bed and Breakfast, which is actually located in Dauphin. The St. Rose Inn in St. Rose Judac is a, another option as well. And there's a chicken chef right on site as well. But again, um, another option to spend the night. If you're from Winnipeg and you're taking Highway 6, you're going through Ashern, Ericsdale, there are bed and breakfasts available. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to provide you the very last slide it does have the website where you can look up all the registered bed and breakfasts in Manitoba to see what might be a good stop for an overnight option. So those are our scenic destinations. I'd like to take you now to some recommendations for, again, those of you that are a little bit more on the adventurous side, what are some adventure day trips? Let's start with High Wire Zipline Adventures. High Wire Zipline is in central Manitoba and it is a family owned business. The Zipline company is located in the Pemina Valley. It actually took five years to research and develop this Zipline park, I like to call it. Um, from Winnipeg, it's about just short two and a half hours. You go through Morden and you just pass Manitou, Manitoba, and that'll bring you to the High Wire Zipline Adventure. From Brandon, it's about the same, just short about two hours and 15 minutes, Google Maps shares. So again, in a, a really great destination, but you go through Morden. And if you're you're with family, or if you're a uh, dinosaur, dinosaur fanatic, there's the Canadian Fossil Discovery Center in Manitoba. And there's also some great restaurants, some great boutiques and stores that you can access in, in Morden as well. Lots to see and do. The next one I have here, I, I, I thought I definitely had to mention Nursey Snake Dens. So right now in May is the best time to visit the snake dens. Um, it had, you know, it's, it's the largest mating den anywhere in the world for red-sided garter snakes. Now, it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but again, it's adventurous. Try something new, right? Um, the, the, the snakes don't come to you. They're in a pit. <laughs> They're in a den. And so, again, you know, it's kind of being adventurous and trying something a little bit different. Another suggestion for an adventurous day trip is Surus Swinging Bridge. Now, the town of Surus does, it, it represents Western region in Manitoba. So we're, you know, we're kind of making our way across the province, but Surus itself welcomes visitors to one of the highlights. It kind of has a tourism trail. And one of the highlights of that tourism trail is the bridge. Now, the bridge was just updated in 2013, and it is now the longest bridge um, in Manitoba, in Canada, the longest swinging bridge in Canada. So that's kind of cool as well. With that tourism trail, or I, I they call tourism row in Suris, uh, you have the Canadian Suris Railway Museum, you have the Swinging Bridge, of course, there's a Hillcrest Museum, an Agriculture Museum as well, and the CPR Caboose. So lots to see and do. What a gem in Manitoba. Um, there's a beautiful Victoria Park campground as well, I'd like to highlight too. And it also has a outdoor pool and water park uh, for those hot summer days too. And there's a picture there. This picture is of the Surus Swinging Bridge and it's a beautiful night shot too. The next destination for adventurers is the Spruce Woods Provincial Park. The, 
this again is in Western Regent as well, and not too far from Brandon, <laughs> a little bit, a longer drive for Winnipeg, you know, at about two hours. And there's a self-guiding trail in the Spruce Woods Provincial Park, and that's what the Spruce Sands are. And what it is, is towering sand dunes that actually go up to about 30 meters in height. Quite impressive. Um, it's like the desert. So Manitoba has its own desert. Who knew? There's also the Devil's Punch Bowl Trail, and that is interpreting hiking trails to such a unique place. It's a desert light -like region surrounded by spruce trees. And again, it offers many interpretive hiking trails that are called a devil's punch bowl because there's a pond that has formed that formed from underground systems of streams of water. And now it's created over time, a beautiful pond that now has the nickname Devil's Punch Bowl Trail. I'd also like to highlight Caddy Lake Rock Tunnels. Now, Caddy Lake is a lake in southeastern Manitoba, near the Manitoba and Ontario border. It's within Whiteshell Provincial Park as well, close to West Hawk. Um, Caddy Lake rock tunnels are rock caves that were created by railroad construction. And you can take again a canoe, a kayak, and you can explore these rock caves and they're absolutely beautiful. So definitely something to mention those tunnels. Taking us now to the Nipua area of Manitoba, I'd like to highlight the Farmery Estate Brewery just outside Nipua. The store itself is inside Nipua, but you can take a tour of the brewery and learn how their, their beer, their ingredients for their beer is actually grown and how it's made. So it's kind of unique as well and might be something of interest to the adventurous type, but also maybe the relaxation type um, road trips as well. It's only a two hour drive from Winnipeg and one hour from Brandon, and it's going to be opening. I actually just called to make sure it was up to date and they're going to be opening the third week of June. So again, something to put on our list of exciting road trips. The town of Pinawa, I also wanted to highlight, and the town of Pinawa represents southeastern Manitoba, and I wanted to use the town of Pinawa as the featured destination for adventurers. Here you see from Winnipeg, it's just short of an hour and a half drive. You can take two different highways to get there as well, depending on what you would like to other explore. And from Brandon itself, it's about a three and a half hour drive as well. So let's talk about what can we do in Pinawa. So Pinawa itself, let me just get to my page here. Um, there is a provincial park, because we have 92 of them, there's a provincial park in the Pinawa area, where the Pinawa Dam is and generating station. It's actually also a heritage site. There's a Pinawa suspension bridge. There's those of you that like to golf, there's the Pinawa Golf Club, there's the Pinawa Loop Trail, which has several trails, including the Pinawa Ironwood Trail. And the Loop Trail itself is about 10 kilometers. Um, it takes about two and a half hours to hike. But, you know, if you get tired, there's a lot of access points into the town of Pinawa where you can take a break. There's also the Hoopla Island, which was newer for me as well. It's a floating obstacle course. So it's great for families, 
kids and older kids and adults would love something like that because you're literally on the lake you get to enjoy um, an obstacle course meaning there's bouncy flotation um, equipment on the lake as well and it's really sounds like fun also what Pinawa is very infamous for is to go tubing and so you can raft down the Pinawa channel and raft down the river in a rented single or multi-rider tube or bring or rent a kayak. The Pinawa ch ch uh, Channel Float and Paddle Company is right away taking reservations to book um, that tubing experience. So they're open now and I believe it starts to offer the tubing experience in June. So what a unique activity to do. Great for families, great for single riders, right? Everyone and anyone can enjoy it. This picture here is of the, the Pinawa Dam. And this picture here is of the river, the channel that you can explore with a kayak or you can rent a tube, like I mentioned as well. But I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures. Look at that scenery. Look how beautiful that is. If you decide to spend the night when you have your road trip to the Pinawa area, where could you spend the night? Well, there's the Pinewood Lodge, which is the picture that you see on my slide here. A little bit more pricey, so, you know, depending on the budget, but it is an option. There's also the Pinawa Hotel. If you would like to camp, there's the Pioneer Bay Campground in Clearwater Provincial Park in Pinawa as well. There's Otter Falls Campground not too far away. And right in town, there's the Ironwood Inn Bed and Breakfast. There's the Lee River Bed and Breakfast and Lac de Bonnie on your way home as well. So lots of different options where you could actually spend the night. Now I'd like to take you to relaxation day trips or road trips. Several um, variety here. For example, there's Winnipeg Beach. If you would like to watch a bandstand, um, take part in some of the, the bands, the music shows that they present. It's right on the boardwalk of Winnipeg Beach as well. And of course, Winnipeg Beach represents the Interlake. So on Saturday nights, they have their live on the bandstand. You can actually Google it and they have the whole a website devoted to live on the bandstand and you can see what um, cover bands are playing each Saturday night. Um, there are tea houses, a relaxation day trip go visit a tea house. You can do many other activities during the day, but if you like to stop for a light snack, if you'd like to stop at a tea house that even has a gift shop, a retail experience, there are many tea houses across the province. Um, for example, in Rose North, there's the Old Farmhouse Cafe, which is just lovely. There's the McLeod House Tea Room. That's a restaurant and a boutique in Stonewall. We have in Morden, we have Bella's Castle, which is a restaurant and patio, which also includes a B&B &B on site. And it is a historic stone mansion. It's absolutely beautiful. It was built in 1902. In Altona, if you're in the Altona area, you could also visit the Jasmine Room, which is a gift shop and tea room as well. And there are many, many more. Markets, again, such a variety of markets in Manitoba during the summertime. Many of them are starting to open up in spring. So as of May, the start of tourism season in Manitoba. Some suggestions, Camp Arnez, Winnipeg Beach has a market, Winkler has a market. It's the Community Farmers Market on Tuesdays, I believe. Verdon has a farmers market on Fridays. Pine Ridge Hollow is Saturdays and Sundays. 
market and the Red River uh, Farmers Market is at the exhibition grounds in Winnipeg. So again, many, many more. I'm just highlighting the very surface of options that are for markets, that are for festivals, that are for tea houses as well. Horseback riding. If you or your family might like to go horseback riding or maybe it's a new experience, um, here are just some examples that I'm highlighting. There are many, many more as well, but Falcon Lake Ranch, Lactabani, Fraserwood, Onanol, um, close to Wasagaming and um, Clear Lake. Again, lots of different destinations. If you'd like to try something that you consider relax, relaxing. Maybe if you haven't done it before, it might be a little bit more of the adventurous side, but again, to kind of think, you know, what can we do this summer that's kind of different? And then I have there on the bottom of the screen, the International Peace Garden, which is in Southwest Manitoba, devoted to world peace. Um, it lies between the US and the Canadian border. And again, is a symbol of friendship. And it is in the community, the town of Boise of Ain. If you're visiting Boise of Ain to go to the International Peace Garden, you could also explore the outdoor art gallery as well, which is kind of unique, an outdoor art gallery. I'm going to speak to Hecla uh, Grindstone Provincial Park as my feature destination, but just I want to speak to the Arburg Multicultural Heritage Village as well, which is what you see here, this picture in Arburg, the Multicultural Heritage Village, which is in the Interlake as well. And it's about an hour and a half from Winnipeg and about three hours from Brandon. The Heritage Village showcases a broad selection of heritage buildings from around the Interlake. So go and enjoy discovering the new buildings that has joined the collection. Um, and above that, we have Hecla. So for Hecla itself, like I said, it's going to be my feature destination for relaxation day trips. Here you see the map from Winnipeg to Hecla. It's about a two hour drive from Brandon, a little bit farther at a four hour day trip. So again, a little bit longer, but it's not something I, I find from my experience, people think about Hecla as being a shorter just destination. So let's talk about what there is to do in Hecla, Grindstone, again, a provincial park. So from Winnipeg, we take Highway 8 all the way north, right? How, but where's the fun in that? What we could do on our way to Hecla, you can take... Um, uh, Interlake via PR 232 that takes you past um, Whitewold community, Donatar community, and again, might be a, um, a road trip that you haven't before ventured through. For things to do in Hecla itself, let's take a look here. We have a, a park that um, has a total area of over a thousand kilometers. So quite, Hecla quite spans out in this provincial park. It's a very scenic drive. Uh, there's a Hecla Village self-guiding tour that you can take around the village, which will explore um, an old store, an old museum, um, an old school as well, a old church which is kind of cool. So for history buffs, that's a really great self-guiding tour. Um, there's the Sunset Beach, Gull Harbor Beach on a hot summer day, the Gull Harbor Marina um, as well. And, and that's a shot that you're going to see right away. I'll, I'll show that to you now. Here's the Gull Harbor Marina right here, which again, you can rent kayaks or you can again enjoy the beach area too. But there's also an inn. And I'm gonna talk about that right away for accommodation. But Hecla area, the park itself, they're swimming, it has beautiful white sand beaches, 
that has eroded from sandstone. So that's what makes the beaches so um, light and bright. Um, the Sunset Beach is located on the northwest shore of Hecla Island, just north of the campground. There's also a dog friendly swim area too, for those of you that would like to bring your furry family member. And the Gull Harbor Beach is on the south shore of the bay within walking distance of both the campground and the resort. And I'm gonna highlight the resort right away for you. There's fishing, it's a popular recreational activity in the Hecla area. There's picnic sites as well. The picnic sites um, off the East Quarry is very common, it's very popular. The West Quarry is more focused on family cabins. So the East Quarry, close to the marina has really beautiful picnic sites for family. There's a playground as well. They're located at the Lagoon Beach and the Gull Harbor Campground. There's also one in the parking lot near the Grindstone Recreation Area. So much to see and do. And there's really something for everybody. There's even boating that's available. It's a popular activity with several boat launches um, near the North Cliff and Black's Point at the Grindstone Recreation Area. Area, Gull Harbor, Harbor, as well as Hecla Village will have a boat launch for you too, if that's of interest. Now, back to these pictures. So this is the Gull Harbor Marina and Inn, which means there's accommodation available for you. This picture here represents the beautiful quarry, um, the, the, you know, it's a photographer's dream, but even for those of us who just like to snap a picture of one of our adventures um, in terms of a day trip to Manitoba. Beautiful shots, beautiful scenery. What if you'd like to spend the night? So if you'd like to spend the night, there is the Gull Harbor Campground, of course, and that's a picture of it right there, a beautiful site. There's a Gull Harbor Marina Lighthouse Inn that I mentioned. There's Lakeview Hecla Resort as well, which is you know a little bit more expensive because the resort has the golf course. The resort has an indoor swimming pool slash water park area. I know it has a slide. There's also a spa and a restaurant on site. Um, so you're really getting your money's worth. Um, now to take you away from Hecla, perhaps on your way home, you'd like to spend the night in Gimli or in Winnipeg Beach as well. There's the Gimli Resort, which is the Lakeview Hotel, which is right on the lake as well. And there's Inn on Center, which is a historic home that has been renovated and it used to be a bed and breakfast and now it's in on center and it's absolutely beautiful. You can go on the website and you can visit all the different rooms and it's really quite lovely. Um, if you want to go to Winnipeg Beach, of course, there's the provincial uh, campground, but there's also Husavik campground, which is a privately owned campground as well in Winnipeg Beach. So much to see and do. And what's really exciting about Hecla and Grindstone Provincial Park is like you've gone to the Maritimes, the east coast of Canada, without leaving the province. Because of the history, because of the scenic, uh, what to see, there's so, there's so much to do there that it's really quite a lovely destination. So I hope I piqued your interest in some of those things to, to see and do. I'd like to, um, now that I've taken you through some options for scenic day trips, for adventurous day trips and relaxation day trips, I'd like to just provide some tr tourism resources where you could do, you know, I hope I planted the seed and initiated some interest and curiosity of the different destinations in Manitoba, but here you can go and access some specific websites. So for example, there's Travel Manitoba, which of course 
is an awesome website that gives you so many ideas of places to go and it breaks it down in those region, regions I introduced to you um, earlier in the presentation and how I kind of highlighted different areas, destinations in terms of uh, the regions of Manitoba. But Travel Manitoba, the website also has a visitor guide. So there's an online every year getting ready for the beginning of tourism season in Manitoba. There's a tourism guide that you can request a paper copy, but to save a tree, if you can access um, the internet, you can download that, vis that visitor guide for you for free. And again, it just highlights those different regions and some essential trips that they're highlighting outside of what some of the ones we covered today. So again, there's more to learn and more to explore. Also with Travel Manitoba, there's a specific North of 53 website as well. Um, doesn't qualify as much for a day trip, but I wanted to include it. So if you wanted to take a longer vacation within the province, you can explore, you know, the Paw, Flint Flon, um, even up to Thompson, those areas in the summertime, the lakes, the forestry, the rock formations are absolutely breathtaking. So again, you know, another option, but a longer day trip. Each region has its own website as well, its own tourism website. So if you've never been to, let's say, in the Interlake in Manitoba, um, and you'd like to explore it because you've heard some wonderful things about Gimli, about Winnipeg Beach, et cetera, Fisher Branch, there's lots of different areas that you can explore. Go directly to the website and they'll hi highlight things to do um, in that specific region. So again, a great resource for all of those. There's also Brandon Tourism. So those of you outside of Brandon um, and you haven't been to the city of Brandon before, let's explore. If you want to visit or it's, you know, a drive, you're in the area, the Nipawa, the Minnedosa area, um, Spruce Sands Park again, definitely check out the Brandon Tourism website. Manitoba Tourism Education Council, again, who I'm representing today, um, you can visit our website. It doesn't give you tourism destinations, but we do offer training. And it's not just if you work in hospitality or retail. It's again, you know, we might have leadership training, we might have diversity training, we might have human resource training or social media training, communication workshops, time management workshops. It might be something that you're interested in just for your own professional development. And like I said earlier, I'd like to share with you the Bread and Breakfast Association. They list all the bed and breakfasts in Manitoba. And they show beautiful pictures. They tell you whereabouts it is and what, what there is to see and do in the area where the B&B &B is located. It's an excellent resource. You know, kind of thinking outside of, well, if I don't camp, or if I don't want to do the hotel thing or motel experience, what's another option? And another option is to visit one of the, I believe there's almost 100 bed and breakfasts registered with the association in Manitoba. So that's pretty impressive, isn't it? So on this note, I'd like to wrap up. I hope you took away some new ideas that you haven't thought of before or you heard of with Destination, but you didn't really know what there was to see and do there or even where it was, where it was located. So I'd like to wish you a wonderful Manitoba summer and I'm gonna pass it off to Erin now. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Melanie. If you have a couple of minutes, we do have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Um, one, actually, I'm curious about, do you have a favorite spot that you like to visit? Oh, I have several. It's really hard to pin it down. I could go through each region and give my favorite. <laughs> I have a lot of great memories with Hecla Grindstone Provincial Park um, growing up and then taking my own young, when my kids were younger. I absolutely love that area of Manitoba. And I, I don't think it gets the attention that it deserves. 
Um, so that's definitely one of my favorites. But like I said, I have a favorite in every region <laughs> of the province, because what I what I what I get to do is really explore the province in my work. But I've done that even before I started working in the tourism industry. So I would say Hecla is one of my go to areas. Um, but you know, I, I kind of highlighted Pinawa and Steep Rock as well, because they're also my favorites too. <laughs> And you know, I'm from Pinawa, so it's weird when you talk about your hometown you? as the place to, to be excited about. So, well, yeah. then you are. I'm speaking to the expert then. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I didn't realize about the floating obstacle course. I didn't know I about think, it. I think that's something newer that um, Pinawa has brought in. Yeah, and it's just, if you Google it, you look at some of the pictures, man, does it look like fun? Like one of those, like those shows that you see like wipe out but on the water I guess yeah exactly exactly and and you see there's a picture of everybody jumping you know I guess it's all coordinated I'm sure it's safe and you just see that they're jumping from you know one blow up I'll call it a blow up because I don't know the terminology from one blow up to another and it just looked like so much fun <laughs> yeah it's great on a summer day what a great way to stay cool yeah, because that's very cold water there, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, you, may have, you may have sort of talked about some of these places, but you didn't say it from this point of view. Is there any that you think would be the most romantic place if someone has something special planned for the summer? Oh, the most romantic. Well, um, again, I would, I would highlight um, the B&Bs. I think B&Bs are definitely could be romantic. You know, I know girlfriends go, you know, for a weekend getaway. I, I know that that's common for B&Bs, but I, I think for a man, romantic getaway, I think one of the bed and breakfasts in the province is a beautiful idea, you know, and then go somewhere that you haven't been before because then you get to experience it, something with your partner, with your loved one um, that you haven't done before, you haven't explored. So don't just go to the B&B that is in your community. Take that day trip, take that road trip, or maybe a weekend getaway. But I think a bed and breakfast is a wonderful idea to be romantic. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. That sounds like a good plan. I was just thinking that maybe people, if they have, um, if they've heard of a restaurant or a shop or something, or maybe an old favorite should check, because unfortunately due to the pandemic, some of them haven't survived, have they? No, they haven't. And I actually did a lot of research um, preparing for this presentation because I didn't want to suggest a bed and breakfast, for example, or a tea house that did close down. Unfortunately, there are some, but um, a lot of them might have closed down temporarily. And the ones that I shared with you today again, are open and are wanting your business, wanting to welcome you into their front door. So, you know, it's it just make sure you do your research. I, I wouldn't also go um, by the website. I would actually pick up the phone or send an email just to confirm, just in case the business didn't have the opportunity to update their website. And even hours, I would check at the out for the hours as well. That's true, because maybe some folks are coming back, but maybe not quite the same amount of hours they used to do. Yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much, Melanie, for joining us. You gave me lots of great ideas of places I should try out and things that I've heard about and never done. And maybe this is the summer to do them. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful Manitoba summer. It's so nice that we're over the pandemic and we can get out there and start experiencing what our province has to offer. Agreed. We do have a lot to offer. Thank you, Melanie. I really appreciate having you here today. I also just wanted to let folks know uh, this has been brought to you by UFCW Local 832. We do this for our members, but we also do this for anybody who wants to watch. If you're interested in learning more about how you could unionize your workplace, you could head to our website, UFCW832.com. And you can click on the join us here and tell you a little bit about what a union can do for your workplace, the benefits to being a member, and how you would uh, go about learning how to get uh, a union in your workplace. And don't worry, because all of that would be kept confidential. If it's
something you choose to do. So thank you for joining us. And I also hope you have a great summer. We will be back as always in June with some more ideas for the SOFA series. Have a good evening. <laughs>